Hello, my name is Hannah Jones and on behalf of the co-authors of our paper, we wish to thank you for your interest in our article, Anti-NMDA Receptor Encephalitis in Māori and Pacific Island Children in New Zealand. This was published in the July 2017 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. This study followed our observation that anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis appeared to be more frequent and severe among Māori and Pacific Island children. What was already known about ethnic predisposition to anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis? It was already evident across cohorts that anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis is overrepresented in non-white ethnicities, but incidence data was lacking. In adults, this ethnic disparity is thought to be in part because African American and Asian women are at higher risk of ovarian teratomas. This does not apply to children because most children do not have an associated tumour. To investigate our hypothesis, we carried out a retrospective case series of all children diagnosed with anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis from 0 to 18 years of age between January 2008 and October 2015. We reviewed the patient's clinical records for demographic data, clinical characteristics and treatment details. We used the modified Rankin scale to score severity. Patients completed a questionnaire requesting ancestry data to the second generation and their address at time of illness so socioeconomic status could be taken into account using the New Zealand Deprivation Index. We identified 16 patients with anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis over this time period. 14 were able to be contacted and completed the questionnaire. One patient had a full New Zealand ancestry. Of the remaining 15, 8 were of Pacific Island ancestry and 7 were New Zealand Māori. The incidence of anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis amongst Polynesian children is therefore 10 per million children per year and in New Zealand Māori children is 3.4 per million children per year. This contrasts to 0.2 per million children per year in children with non-Māori and non-Pacific Island ancestry. In comparison, the UK surveillance study by Wright et al. found an incidence of 0.9 per million children per year in the UK. It was important to take socioeconomic status into account because 30% of New Zealand's most deprived population are Māori and 19% of this population are Pacific Islanders. In our study, 75% of the cases from the most deprived socioeconomic areas were Pacific Island, which is four times greater than would be expected if socioeconomic status alone mediated the increased risk. 25% of cases from the most deprived areas were New Zealand Māori. This is a similar proportion to the general New Zealand population, therefore more research will be required to determine the risk conferred by ancestry as opposed to socioeconomic status. It is evident, however, that the lower risk of anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis in non-Māori and Pacific Island children is independent of their socio-economic status. Our cohort appeared to have more severe disease and poorer outcomes than described in other cohorts. Two-thirds of our patients attained a good outcome with a modified Rankin score of two or less at two-year follow-up despite early and aggressive treatment. This compares unfavourably with more than 80% of other cohorts having a good outcome at two-year follow-up. Overall, our study has shown that Māori and Pacific Island children are at increased risk of anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis and a third of Māori and Pacific Island children have a poor outcome. We propose that this increased risk is genetically mediated, possibly by HLA polymorphisms common to both populations. Further research in this area may help us better understand the pathogenesis of this disease. Once again, thank you for your attention and we hope that you enjoy the paper.